Hello everyone and welcome to North Carolina State University. My name is April Dillon and I'm the area agent for the West Region in North Carolina. About eight years ago, I trained with the Princeton Review and North Carolina State University to become a facilitator for the ACT test. NC State University collaborated with Princeton Review to provide the ASPIRE program. ASPIRE ACT Supplemental Preparation in Rural Education program was designed to improve scores in high school students' performance on the ACT college entrance exam in order to increase the number of students pursuing higher education. As a high school student, preparing for a college entrance exam like the ACT can be pretty difficult. Cooperative extension agents and public high school teachers have teamed up to offer courses in counties to prepare sophomores and juniors for the ACT college entrance examination through the ASPIRE program. The information that I'll be sharing with you today comes from the Princeton Review course workbook for the ACT, which is used for the ASPIRE program through North Carolina State University. Today, our focus will be on tips to help you improve your math ACT score. So grab a pencil and paper and a calculator if you have one handy and we'll get started. There are a few things you should know about the math ACT test. The math test gives you 60 minutes to answer 60 questions. Pacing yourself, that would be one minute per question. Topics tested range from arithmetic to trigonometry. Calculators, including four function, scientific, or graphing calculators are, not, are permitted, but not required. You cannot use a TI-89, a TI-92, or a TI-INSPIRE CAS. There are also some models of Hewlett-Packard and Casio calculators that are prohibited. Check with ACT.org for the most current information on what calculators are permitted. Questions come in two formats, your straightforward plug and chug calculation questions, and then word problems. Questions come in three flavors, easy, medium, and difficult. The ACT arranges questions in a rough order of difficulty with most, but not all, of the easy problems in the first 20 questions and most, but not all, of the difficult problems in the last 20 questions. When considering the type of questions on the math test, use your personal order of difficulty. You determine the now, later, and never questions. It is helpful to know that there are approximately 14 pre-algebra, 10 elementary algebra, nine intermediate algebra, 14 plane geometry, and four trigonometry questions. One technique that you can use when approaching math questions is ballparking. The figures are not there to trick you, so use them to help you make educated guesses. Ballparking can help you avoid careless mistakes on questions in your personal order of difficulty, and they can help you make educated guesses on more difficult questions. Let's ballpark this question together. In the figure below, the area of triangle ABC is 30. If the segment AD is four and the segment DC is five, then the area of triangle DBC is what? We can start with process of elimination of answer choice E, since it is larger than 30. We can also process of eliminate answers A and B, since triangle DBC is bigger, is the bigger of the two triangles, and the area of the entire triangle is 30. You will notice that you are given a formula under the figure. Anytime that you are given a formula in a question or problem, use it. 
our third step is to use the given formula to calculate the area of triangle ACD. One half of four times five equals 10. Thus, the area of DBC must be 20. The answer is choice C. Your calculator is too smart for its own good. Calculators will give you a wrong answer if you aren't careful. Remember these calculator precautions. Negatives always surround negative numbers with parentheses when punching them into your calculator. Fractions, be careful when converting fractions to decimals and decimals to fractions using your calculator. Also be cautious of operations within the numerator or the denominator. Always be sure to close those parentheses that your calculator opens with square roots and all the trigonometry functions. If you have a calculator handy, try using your calculator on this example. When using your calculator, make sure you place those parentheses around the value you are plugging in. Try using your calculator on this example. What is the value of 3x squared minus 4x plus 6 when x equals negative 3? You can select your answer now. The correct answer is E. 45. There are really only a few problems which actually require a calculator. Most math can be done without a calculator. However, your calculator may help some problems go faster if you are careful and don't make mistakes. Word problems can be tough because they require more reading and understanding exactly what the question is within the problem. This basic approach will help you tackle word problems successfully. First, know the question. Read the whole question before calculating anything and underline the actual question. Second, let the answers help. Look for clues on how to solve and ways to use the process of elimination. Break the problem into bite-sized pieces and watch out for tricky phrasing. Let's try this word problem. First, we have to read the entire problem and know what the question is asking. Each member in a club had to choose an activity for a day of volunteer work. One third of the members chose to pick up trash. One fourth of the remaining members chose to paint fences. Five six of the remaining members chose to paint buses. If the club has 36 members, how many of the members chose to plant trees? The question is, if the club has 36 members, how many of the members chose to plant trees? Remember to break down the problem into bite-sized pieces. Give this word problem a try on your own now. You may select your answer now. Let's talk about it. If we break this problem down into pieces, our first step would be to determine the number of members who picked up trash. One third of the members picked up trash and one third of 36 is 12. So 12 members picked up trash. Now we have 24 members remaining. One fourth of the remaining members painted fences and one fourth of 24 is six. So six members painted fences. Now we have 18 members remaining 
and five sixths of those painted buses. Five sixths of 18 is 15. 15 members painted buses. So 12 plus six plus 15 is 33. And subtract that from 36, and that leaves us with three members who planted trees. The correct answer is F. Another helpful approach to math problems is plugging in. Plugging in changes algebra and geometry problems into simple arith arithmetic problems. Use these steps as the basic approach to plugging in. First, identify the opportunity to plug in. Choose numbers for variables. Small numbers like two, five, or 10 are good choices. Use your numbers to solve the problem and circle your target answer. Then check all five answers and eliminate any that do not match your target answer. Let's try the basic approach to plugging in with this question. x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12 is the equivalent to which answer? First, let's try plugging in the number three for the equation in number 51 above. When plugging in the number three, what is your target answer? Next, try plugging in the number three for each of the five answers. Which answer matches your target answer? Try these steps and select your answer now. If you plugged in the number three, your target answer should be 30. And if you plugged in the number three for each of the five answers, which answer matched the target answer of 30? Only answer choice E gives you the target answer of 30. E is your correct answer. Another strategy to ACT math is plugging in the answer. This is different from plugging in. The basic approach to plugging in the answer is first, identify the opportunity to plug in the answer. Next, underline what the question is asking and label your answer choices. Start with the middle answer choice and work through all steps of the problem. When you find an answer that works, stop. If a plug in the answer question asks for the least or greatest number, do not start with the middle answer. Let's try plugging in the answer with this question. A quadrilateral with a perimeter of 40 has sides with lengths that are consecutive multiples of four. What is the length of the longest side? Our first step is to label the answers as the longest side, as done here in red. Then we plug in the answer and see if we can process of eliminate any answers. The possible multiples of four are four, eight, 12, 16, 20, and so forth. We can process of eliminate F and G because four and eight, if they are the largest size side, those numbers are too small. We can process of eliminate the middle answer, H, because 10 is not a multiple of four. So let's go down and try answer J. Perfect. 16 plus 12 plus eight plus four equals 40. Our answer is J. So on the test, 
how do you know when to plug in and when to plug in the answer? Here's how to know which to do. Plug in a number when you have variables in the answer choices or variables defined in relation to one another in the question or you have non-specified numbers in relation to one another, such as ratios percents. Plug in the answer when you feel the urge to set up an algebraic equation. Plug in the answer when the question asks for a specific amount of value, such as what is the value of, or how much, or how many. Also plug in the answer when you have numbers in the answer choices. Well, that concludes our helpful strategies for math. Remember these most important tips. Ballparking can help you avoid careless mistakes on questions in your personal order of difficulty and help you make educated guesses on those more difficult questions. Use your, cal use your calculators with caution. Remember the basic approach to word problems. Remember to plug in a number when variables are in the answer choices when variables are defined in relation to one another in the question, and when using non-specified numbers in relation to one another. Remember to plug in the answer when you feel the urge to set up an algebraic equation. When the question asks for a specific amount of value or when there are number, numbers in the answer choices. By participating in an Aspire class, you will learn the latest tactics and strategies to improve your ACT score. The program is open to high school sophomores and juniors, and it includes 30 hours of ACT course instruction where students will learn the skills they need to tackle the ACT. Students also receive the Princeton Review ACT Study Manual, the Princeton Review 1460 Question Manual, and access to four ACT full-length practice exams with score analysis and breakdown. If you have questions or would like more information about the Aspire program, you can contact Bianca Glaze, the Aspire program coordinator at North Carolina State University, or you can also contact me by emailing abdillon at ncsu.edu. Good luck on your ACT.